Welcome back everyone, this is Dragon Loon, and we are here working on our factory. Now, uh, on the last video, we had several people that had uh, mentioned that the devs were working on closing off the underworld, so I took the liberty of moving the factory up to a much larger area to where we're actually running off of the supports that are over here. So we're at the highest point of this cliff face that is at, that the three iron nodes we were using down there are sitting in front of. So I made that even and level with uh, to give us a nice big open space. I also put our uh, space elevator back in place and I just moved all of our uh, machines and factories up here to the top floor. Uh, over here is our copper wire and our cables. And then over here is again our rotors and our iron plates. Now the one thing I wanted to work on today was unlocking some more of the milestones as well as going about and getting some of the hard drives that are scattered around the world and unlocking some of the alternate recipes. Now, the milestones that we still need to unlock here in Tier 2 are the jump pads, which personally, I don't use them. I don't find a use for them, but it's always nice to have them unlocked. Uh, we do want to unlock the walkways because that will allow us to just make our factory look a little bit better, uh, neater, cover up some of the holes like those holes around the uh, conveyor elevators just so that we can run around our factory without the fear of falling through. Uh, we do also need to unlock our color gun, which is going to allow us to color code things or change the color of walls. Uh, I don't think it affects the color of foundations, but we can always check that out. And then, of course, we need to unlock our steel production, which this one I'm really looking forward to unlocking, mostly because of the Mark II miner here, which pretty much doubles the output of the resource nodes which will allow us to use, have more of the smelters per uh, line. The other thing that the tier 4 production unlocks uh, in the Logistics Mark III is the conveyor, bar, uh, conveyor Belt Mark III, as well as a larger storage. And another thing that is really, really nice to have is this Xeno Basher. It does a lot more damage than the the smaller version of the Xeno, and I cannot remember what it's called. It is called the Xeno Zapper. Um, so that is what we have today. And as far as the alternate recipes, if we go over here and look at our interactive map, um, as we scroll down here, we have this overlay called hard drives and we've, if we turn that on you can see that there are a ton of hard drives all over the place. Now this is way more than we absolutely actually need but the great thing about it is that we have so many and we can unlock all of our alternate recipes with fairly, relatively few uh, late game components such as this hard drive down here needs a bunch of screws and this one here needs 40 power now if we scroll uh, zoom in a little bit and we turn on the realistic overlay we can see that our base is actually right here and this hard drive that needs 40 power is relatively close to our coal node, which is right here. So we can easily route some power over there long enough to o unlock that. Now, unfortunately, all of the other hard drives are way over here and up north. So we're going to have a lot of exploring to do. But, you know, exploring is nice. 
So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go about and do some exploring, and I will show you what we're going to do once we have some of those collected. Until then, see you then. Alright, so we've made it to our first crash site. That's what these things are called. Uh, they are where we find our hard drives. And if you look around, we have all kinds of things just laying around. Now, some of these we can't do anything with. We can't even deconstruct them, unfortunately. So they just kind of take up space. But the really great thing about these crash sites is you can always find resources just laying around. And it's really beneficial to pick them up especially if you go exploring for uh, really early in the game because they can give you some uh, mid to late game components that you wouldn't be able to otherwise access this early. So I've already routed some power over here. So let's go ahead and hook this up and I'll show you guys what a hard drive looks like. So you just open these things up and you pull the handle and it opens up and you get these hard drives. And they stack, I believe, up to 100. I personally have never tried stacking very many, because usually by the time I get them, I'm trying to use them to collect alternate recipes. Uh, so I will, once again, go around and start collecting up some more, and see you on the other side. All right, so I have managed to collect two of these hard drives. So now let's go into the MAM here, and we will start researching them. Now each hard drive does take 10 minutes to research, uh, so it is highly recommended that we find uh, something else to work on researching and work on in general. So let's go ahead and go to the hub terminal and we will start uh, unlocking more of these tiers. Now I'm going to jump into tier 4 and go to steel production and I've already collected up the materials needed in order to unlock this so let's go ahead and select the milestone dump everything in here and we can unlock steel production which allows us to upgrade our miners to miner mark 2's. That will double the amount of resources that we can let collect at one time. Milestone reached. Steel production unlocked. Foundry and improved miner included to ensure efficiency of new pipelines. A collection of new, more complex parts is now available for crafting. All right, and some of those parts include the steel ingots, steel beams, steel pipes, encased industrial beams, stators, motors, and heavy modular frames. Now, we need the motors in order to unlock the Logistics Mark III, which gives us the Mark III conveyor belt. And in order to make the motors, we need stators. Well, stators require copper wire, and steel pipes. Steel pipes require steel beams, excuse me, steel ingots, and steel ingots require both iron ore and coal. So we need to set up a production line to bring coal in. Now, if we look over here at our map, over here, we can turn on the coal nodes, and we don't want impure coal nodes because we only have one of those over here. And we don't want normal nodes because those are still really far away. But if we turn on the pure nodes, we can see that we have one down here, which we've already started using for our uh, coal power plant and we have one way over here and I know exactly where that is because in my last playthrough I used that one and so we are going to use that one again 
for the production of steel. Now, the last playthrough that I did, the this production line, I actually used that for my generators, and I had a vehicle transporting everything back and forth between my base, which I had set up right here, and the coal naud, which was right here. I think this time, I'm just going to use conveyor belts. So, what we need to do is we actually need to upgrade our miners first and foremost. And if we go in here to our construction menu and go to production and take a look at the miners, oops, we need two uh, portable miners. We need encased industrial beams and we need steel pipes. Drat. That means we actually need to set up our steel production in the foundry first. And in order to set that up we also need encased industrial pi uh, beams and steel pipes. Which means we're going to be making things by hand. So, what I'm going to do is I want three, make that four, mark two miners. That's the three normal iron nodes that we have right here. And that is the two coal nodes, that meaning the power production coal node to the south, and the coal node that we're going to be utilizing for steel production. And then we want, um, we'll start off with three foundries. So, let me collect up all of these resources and make a bunch of steel pipes and encased industrial beams. And we'll be right back. All right. So I have gone ahead and gotten all the components, and I've even upgraded two of the miners. So let's go ahead and put these conveyor lifts back in, because I had to take those out uh, due to the alignment of everything. Um, it just doesn't work necessarily. So we will throw these back in. And as you can see, that is running full tilt now, and it is at the maximum capacity for the Mark II conveyor belt. So we definitely need to get some steel production in so that we can get the Mark III's. So we need to do the same thing for this conveyor. And like so. And, if I remember right, I forgot to hook up the power. So we should be able to do this from here. If I can remember where the darn power pole is. Ooh, that's not good, that's not good, that's... Aww. Alright. Well, seems how we're down here anyways. We'll hook that up. And now our rotor production can get back into full swing as that miner was controlling our rotor production. Alright. So we've got that set up. And we've got that set up. And, ah, there we are. I was about to ask, why is it not coming through? Alright. So we have everything set up. The one thing we don't have set up just yet is our foundries. But I'm not entirely sure where I'm going to bring that in. Because I'm not entirely sure how I'm going to bring the coal over. I could set up 
a vehicle or truck station right here that has the vehicle bringing it back and forth because the coal node, if we do this, we will see that, that coal node, I believe, yep, is right there. So it's right over there. And we can't really see it from here, not yet. But if we truck that over here, I do know that even the smallest truck, the tractor, eventually you can be bringing over enough to where uh, it will build up a large storage. Now that was while still providing uh, coal or while providing coal for power plants. I don't know how it will work for foundries. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set everything up off camera and I'm going to pr start producing my steel ingots and my steel beams and steel rods because I also need to actually upgrade my limestone miners and then move where my concrete production is over here because this is where my steel is going to be and we need concrete for the reinforce uh, excuse me encased industrial beams so we will actually end this video here and next time we pick up we will have our steel production in place and as always, if you found this video enjoyable, please give me the thumbs up as that encourages me to produce even more videos and it lets me know what I'm doing great. Also, if you haven't already, please subscribe. That way you don't miss any more of my videos. Until next time, stay frosty.